Okay, great. So welcome to the Chaos Diversity Inclusion Working Group meeting on April 22nd, Easter Monday. The agenda right now is pretty light. <laughs> we didn't know who else would be here um, because we have Easter holiday in some areas. So right now we have review action items. Um, and then determine next week's facilitator note taker. I think we can also talk about the um, the new stack. Was that mm -hmm. so? Maybe you have some additional information there. We could also talk about the um, sponsoring metric. So those are ideas that I have for today. Any other things on your mind? Anything you want to talk about? And Sarah, you had volunteered to take notes today? I am. You sometimes are faster than me, but yes. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Thank you very much. I appreciate Fish. it. OK. Uh, action items, I copied them up here so we have them in one easy place to see. Sir, so you'd wanted to talk to Paris after her yeah. busy week got a little quieter. So Yeah, and we have a, a call scheduled this week, so I'm hoping to connect with her on it. And I've, I know that Emma, actually Don shared some background information, so hopefully you know that will move forward this week. Okay, perfect. Uh, Nicole had contacted me about reaching out to Jace, mm -hmm. um, just to clarify what, what she was supposed to do. Um, I don't know if what came of it, so. Okay. So no update for right now, okay. Yep. I'll check in with Nicole too, just to, you know, since we're getting close, we might wanna have a touch base call. Um, a, you know, amongst maybe Danielle, myself, and Nicole, and we can talk about any research we've done or any people we've talked to and just move, you know, make sure we're all prepared for that. Mm -hmm. Yep, sounds good. Did Nicole reach out to you last she week? She didn't. No, so I can, I'll make sure to connect with her. Perfect. Daniel, you wanted to reach out to Silona, and I see here that Silona is not attending. Attending. Yeah, yeah I, I talked to her last week for the previous one. Um, she mentioned that she is not attending KeepCon this time. So okay. she won't be there. Okay. That's so Daniel, Daniel, do you like the idea of just doing a touch base call this week maybe? Or, or maybe even early next week? Yeah, yeah it, it works for me. So the, the only... Da, 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 da. Yeah, this week early, next week works for me because the 1st and 2nd of May are bank holidays again, again in Spain. So, yeah, yes, to, to be sure okay. we are on the line. Mm -hmm. oh, sorry. Um, so not the first or the second, right? Mm. Okay. Um, okay, thanks. Okay. okay. Perfect. Thank you. I'm glad that's moving forward. Um, I had an action item from like two, three weeks ago, and uh, that is still open. So I have still to do this. Okay. Uh, Nicole and I are working on the blog post, not actively so much. We've been both busy. But we wanted to touch base again this week and advance it. Okay. Okay. Um, I sent out an email with the first issues that are open um, and for, you know, just to the overall broader mailing list to see if anyone wants to engage. Thank you. I saw that. Mm -hmm. I saw that too. Okay. 
And then um, I did send, I filled in some information for a community bridge um, entry. And if we were to consider an, uh, a mentee and a mentorship, and I know that Georg, you went in and made some edits, which was great. Um, I don't know if Matt had a chance to look at that. Uh -huh. That doesn't ring a bell at all. Did I just miss it or did I? You know what, we, we have, maybe this is something we need to have like an official um, issue opened around it. We, I had initially just sent it, I think, to a few people who were engaged in this discussion. Okay. So either I, either I just, it went past me or I never got it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, no. Actually, you were on the email thread, though. Okay, Matt. Um, mm -hmm. So you must have missed, must have missed it, but we can... <laughs> I can ask my brain. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Um, okay. Was it from you, Sarah? Yeah. I started it, and then oh, you were going to... Oh, I see it. Oh, okay. I'm trying to find the document. I can I look here, too. Oh, I actually responded too. I just said thanks for the oh. edit. <laughs> 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 you did respond, Matt. Does this? Yeah, I just in the email. I just said thanks. Looks great. All right. Okay. Looks great. But. Yep. So I guess the next step is just officially submitting it, right? And do I we? Think so. Okay. And did we, um, I think I had picked either next fall is when we would try to get this activated. Uh, you have spring I, highlighted. I don't, we, you have, well, somebody, oh no. I put right. in spring and fall. Yeah, you put fall, Sarah. Got it. Okay. But you think, okay. Okay, I put the document in the meeting minutes. So anyone okay. who doesn't know what the document is, you can go to it. And it's basically all the fields that we need to fill out to apply to become a project on the community bridge. Yep. And I can do, I'll do that now, not like Yes. That, I think you have to send it in as a maintainer, correct? I do. And this, these are the questions I had to send out because I didn't know the answer to it. I didn't want right. to get it. Okay. Um, and then the dollar amount, you know, I see that that's great. Um, so this is helpful. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. And um, yeah, we'll see. Hopefully we'll get some leads. And I know we have the Google Summer of Code and then the Google Season of the Documentation. Yep. yep. So kind of two things on that on my end. I had to, so um, the Community Bridge, I do have a request out to, uh, who is it? I don't know, Kate put me in touch with somebody who does the dollars at the LF, because we have some old um, money from Google Summer of Code last year. Okay. And so the hope was is that we could just move those dollars to the community bridge. It's like, I don't know, $1,500. It's not that much money. Right. Um, and so then the hope is is that with this application, that all the stuff that you answered, Sarah, and then the dollars over. That'll actually kind of get chaos established in Community Bridge, which would be great. We mm -hmm. actually have a little bit of money. <laughs> we right. have a, a program. Um, so that's, that's that. And then um, the Google season of docs, I just got an email from Avik and Till at the Linux Foundation, and uh, the LF doesn't do, the the document program doesn't allow for an umbrella organization. So this morning I just submitted the official application for the season of docs on behalf of chaos. Okay. FYI, yeah, for what it's worth. Okay. It's the same stuff that we circulated with respect to DNI. Right. So nothing changed. I just had to do it only as chaos. Got it. Okay. Great. Okay, and then um, there was a there was activity with Boston University too. Is that is that I don't, actually I don't know where that's at right now. Okay. I should probably ping. <laughs> Does anybody know? They have their I, their stuff. I've not heard back from them after we had the one conversation. Okay. Yeah. 
maybe I can ping Manny and Langdon and see what's happening. It was Langdon. That's the person who I think had mentioned potential mentorships. Yeah, to... Langdon is at Red Hat and Manny is the contact person at Boston University. If you could do that, that'd be great. I'll do that. Yeah, I was just curious where it stood and if that's underway and... Yeah, because that would be starting soon. It was a summer program, at least the last I understood it as. Okay, great. Okay. Where are we at on the agenda? I had something else I wanted to bring up too. We are still going through the action items. Okay. Okay. The next action item was to send out double of completeness exercise results uh, to the general chaos mailing list. And what we had decided as the working group to focus on to reach consensus there. And I've done that. Feedback was really good. And other working groups have expressed interest in copying our approach or tweaking it a little bit. So, and just so everybody kind of knows too, yeah, it was well received. And I've kind of, having spent time in the other working group calls last week, the suggestion is, is to take the spreadsheet that came out of DNI last week. If you're from, not familiar with it, I don't know where the link is. Here would be probably have it somewhere. Um, uh, it was just to add tabs for the other working groups that just follow the same model. So that was so. Mm -hmm. Point being, thank you very much for putting that together. It's going to serve as a nice template for the other working groups to identify metrics as part of the release, number one. And number two, it's going to make my life a lot easier because there's going to be a central place that um, identified metrics for release will be located as opposed to across all working groups. Mm -hmm. Great, okay. Yeah, so that was super helpful. Thank you. So Matt, yeah. I must apologize. We had it on the agenda for the value group and I said, well, we don't have metrics to look at yet, so we can go through the exercise in the value group. <laughs> you did or didn't go through it? You did not, because okay. I said there's the value group is at a very different place with their metrics. Of course. They're all, they would all be read by right now. Well, it still might be worth building out the spreadsheet. Yeah, maybe this week. Yeah, maybe this week. I'm just going to add tabs to this thing right now. And then the last action item from last week was to look at the past and present blog post that I had put together. And thank you very much, Sarah, for suggesting to reach out to the new stack and getting us in contact there. Mm -hmm. Where are we at with them? Um... So the editor is reviewing it and is going to just make some, they want it to be a little bit shorter. So I think they're going to do a, a slight edit and um, tweak that, but then share it with you for, you know, before it goes to final publication. And then the editors also are interested in having people on the podcast to help promote the article. And they um, kind of liked the idea of talking about the article as well as the upcoming KubeCon talk on that, because I believe it's a 20 minute segment on the podcast. Um, 
And so the date that was discussed or suggested for that was going to be May 8th. Sorry, I'm looking at my uh, email notes to find this information at this, as I'm talking. Um, thank you for taking the notes there. So I don't know if anyone who's talking at KubeCon wants to join you, Georg, or, um, you know, I, I, I'd be happy to, but I wanted to also open that up to Daniel and um, Nicole. Hey, Sarah, I just joined. Sorry hey, Nicole, how are you? Welcome, Nicole. Good, good. Doing well, thanks. Sorry, I missed the question. Oh, sure. So the Georg's article about the chaos and the history of the DNI working group is going to be turned oh, into yeah. a contributed article for the new stack. And then to help promote the article and to help promote the talk at KubeCon, they're open to having uh, two guests on the podcast on May 8th. Oh, cool. So I know Georg said he is able to do that. And does that work, date work for you too? Yeah, May 8th would work uh, for me. I'm just checking here. Um, Danielle, what, what about you? Oh, can you say again the question, Nicole? Uh, for uh, the podcast on May 8th. Oh, 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 yeah. So we are still discussing about the, the podcast. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm happy to help if, uh, if needed, definitely. Yeah, I think that great, sounds great, Sarah. Okay, and Georg, you can do it for sure, right? On the 8th? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any preference, Nicole or Danielle, like, or, you know, what? I think it would be good to have uh, gender diversity. Mm -hmm. So if Daniel wants to do it, I'll step down. And then if Nicole wants to do it, that would be great. Or you, Sarah. Nicole, I think, did you take the, I think you're going to be the moderator and sort of took the lead on it. So I'm happy to have you do the podcast too. Does that date work for you, Nicole? But I, I you can't. That's. But I'm. You know. Either way. Yeah. The um. The the eighth works for me. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I can let them know. I mean, Daniel, do you do you feel do you want to give strong preference here? Do you want to have Georg do it? I'm happy if Georg. That's it. I mean, I okay. can help if needed. Uh, okay, got it. I can, I can give some support if you need some numbers or some specific things. So Me too. I'm okay. Happy to help in this way. Yeah. Okay, so I'll confirm Georg and Nicole, and I'm sure they'll be in touch with some specifics, and then we can provide supporting help if, as needed. Hmm. Sounds good. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Hey, could I add something to the agenda and? Are you, if you're through action items, because I have to go at 10. Sure. Yeah. So the Grace Hopper thing mm -hmm. that I've sent out. So I'm glad that Daniel and Sean are both on this call. So the Grace Hopper event is a, if you're not familiar, is an event to support women in IT. And we've been invited as the Chaos Project to participate in kind of a, I think it's a pre-day at the Grace Hopper event. Um, dates being October 1st through the 4th. Um, so, okay, so the, basically the premise for the day is to give the participants an opportunity to work on some development skills and contribute to a project. So chaos being the project. So the thought was, is there anything from the Grimoire Lab side or from the Augur side that is related to DNI that we could ask the students to work on during that day? 
you know, like, like a panel or a, an interface component or a, a data component. It doesn't yeah. have to be fully fleshed out now, but. Hmm. Yeah, I have a, a number of things that I can put together for something like that. I, I'd be excited to get some Grace Hopper folks engaged in the project that way. Okay. Same here. Daniel? Yeah, same. It's basically, I have the same approach. So we have some ideas and. Could I? Could, could you guys put? Um, I don't, maybe we could just do it right now in the minutes. Can you just drop a sentence or two on what those things might be? I just I need them because there's a Google Form application that I have to submit mm -hmm. for Grace Hopper. And again, it's just kind of an orienting thing. And if I need more information, I'll reach out to both of you directly. But what that might look like. You want it in the chat? Um, if you could just put it in the minutes. Okay. That would be really helpful. Again, it can just be like a sentence or two. And I think the format is to have anywhere from eight to 20 uh, participants who join in, in a session and to get them up and running to contribute. So the, the idea here is that some, some of us will be around and they, they will teach people how to do things or? Yeah. Okay. Yep. So a couple of the people in my auger team have applied to go to Grace Hopper. It's very competitive for undergraduates, but I may have some people already there. So the idea would be is that, right, so somebody kind of representing Grimoire Lab or somebody representing Augur, it doesn't have to be somebody from that team, but would kind of help facilitate um, facilitate a, a kind of a, a couple hour event that yeah. would expose the students to the technology and kind of talk about what the goals are of this, mm -hmm. of this effort. Yeah. In the case of the Grimoire Lab, there are some more technical areas and let's say less technical areas, so we can prepare a couple of those, but this mainly depends on the people from Grimoire Lab uh, development team that may attend the event. So okay. let, let me talk first to the people. Okay, that'd um, be great. Yeah, and then I will, I will try to bring these ideas, but mainly is improvements in sorting heads. So we are supporting uh, uh, more definitions of diversity. Mm -hmm. So far, we only have gender, for instance. So it's a way to improve all of this. And the other part, for instance, would be to go for um, uh, uh, specifically writing down the um, ways to deal with Percival and then create with some notebooks a specific uh, data about diversity. Okay. The same way that we, we, we did for OpenStack. And then the very, the very last one would be to produce specific panels. So we can work at certain levels. But depending on the expertise of the lab people attending the events. Okay. That's, yeah. that's helpful. Thank you. And if chaos does go, we get two tickets to the event. They do not provide funding for travel and accommodation, but we can send two people for free to the event. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, by the, by the way, this, this reminds me, uh, kind of change of topic, sorry here. Uh, uh, I, was, I was invited by Google people to some workshop in San Francisco, like in September, no, June, beginning of June. I don't know if you, any of you have received this email? Mm -hmm. No? Okay, because I'm, they are not, um, uh, let's say, funding the trip. I cannot afford the trip by myself. Uh, I'm not sure about sponsorship from Viteria. So I may uh, point to some of you. It's in San Francisco at the beginning of June. What is it? It's, it's kind of a workshop. They want to have some really, really practical workshop for two and a half days. Um, about related about diversity and inclusion. So okay. they reached me out based on the 
portan y no pueden estar con, uh, I guess, chaos and so on. Ok, cool. So I, I, will, I will let yeah. you know. If, oh, can you say again, Sara? Who, who, with, who within Google or what group within Google? Oh, uh, Emerson was the name and Margaret Ann from the University of Victoria might be. Mm, ok, great. You, you know them? I don't, no, I just was just curious, but no, I don't. Okay. Uh, okay, so this is, thanks for the auger ideas. I have the Grimoire Lab ideas for the Grace Hopper thing. Like I said, I gotta, I gotta roll, but I'll get these in. And then I know that they had said if we could just get these ideas roughly in to the system now, we can modify them, of course, <laughs> over the course of summer mm -hmm. to be a little bit more fine-tuned uh, to the event. Uh, it's a it's Grace Hopper is a great opportunity for students. Um, so, you know. That, okay. Yeah. Um, and we can for whoever mentors, I we can work on trying to find ways to fund people to get there as well. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. Cool. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Mm -hmm. I have to go. Awesome. Thank you, Matt. Thank Bye. you, Matt. I think we skipped, uh, there was maybe one thing left on the agenda that we skipped over just to accommodate that Grace Hopper discussion or, or were we done with that? No, I just moved it down. Okay, got it, yep. Mm -hmm. um, the sponsoring metric, let me pull that up. Um, Sponsorship. Here. Oh, that's not where I wanted to post it. There. Okay. It's issue 135. This is one of the metrics we had identified um, during our level of completeness exercise as one that we want to advance and add to the repository for our release. But we don't have it right now. We have some ideas here in this document. And so the proposal is that we review the proposal right now. And Sarah, I see that you made some comments. Maybe we can talk about them. Um, yeah, I guess one of my comments were was around um, yeah, let me pull it up here really quickly. One of them was definitely around the fact that, you know, that these organized Google Summer of Codes or mentorship programs tend to have some formal sort of marketing and promotion or awareness around them, but sponsorship can often be um, kind of under, not purposefully, but it's not always as noticeable or obvious or formalized. So I think when it is happening, though, it's great to try to capture that and, you know, talk about the ways in which sponsorship is happening and is helpful and is beneficial. So almost again, you know, to that point, I think I added in, you know, is there a way to um, promote the actual sponsorship that's happening in a public way and reward and recognize the sponsors um, who take the time to do it? Um, that was one thing. And then the other, I, idea I had that I thought could be really interesting to add to sponsorship was around um, as a metric or an objective, you, know, you, you sort of capture that obviously, or one of the things we hope happens with sponsorship is that people stay engaged in a project and take on bigger leadership roles or new leadership roles and grow in, within the project. So should that be a sample objective? But maybe that's too specific, but um, that was one idea I had um, as something to consider. Okay. Like, did it help to gain, did the sponsorship program lead to more responsibility and more leadership for the person um, within that project? Okay, um, so let's figure out how to work this. I can work it in and just, you know, I, I wanted to sort of raise them as discussions, but I'm happy to suggest language that might capture this. Yeah, I, I think it makes perfect sense. And we have similar language in the mentorship mm -hmm. metric. So I, I think it makes perfect sense. Mentorship and sponsorship is very similar in that right. regard. 
and the outcomes. So I think it makes sense to add it. Okay. With regards to the publicity, I don't, I, I'm not quite sure. Well, I don't know, do projects, you know, I mean, maybe you do it out of, obviously a lot of times people volunteer not for, to receive accolades and get recognition, but it is taking someone under your wing is, it can be, you know, it takes time, effort, energy. Um, maybe it, it, it goes on more under the radar and unrecognized, but I didn't know if there's, we would want to promote the idea of sponsorship and who's engaged in that and who, you know, who's doing it really effectively and actively. I think that would be good. Yeah. So my proposal is that we take five minutes, we all go through this description of the metric. If we see something, we just add it, edit it. And if something comes up you want to discuss, just speak up. Okay. So we should all just go through the leadership sponsorship uh, Google Doc right now. Mm -hmm. That's my proposal. Yeah, no, I think that's good. And if okay. anyone is looking for the link, I put it in the chat. Nicole, did you want to say something? Oh, no, I just said, okay, that sounds good to go through it right now. Awesome. Thank you.
So I was just looking up resources on sponsorship and what I'm seeing at the Harvard Business Review and Stanford is that the people who receive sponsorship are protégés, not sponsees. Oh, that's what they're called? Yep. So I'm changing that. So the question Nicole posted at the top, whether intervention is the right term, that is the term that uh, Harvard Business Review used in its article. Okay. Um, they called uh, sponsorship a key intervention to diversity, diversify top leadership. But I'm fine with changing it to tactic if that makes more sense to people. Yeah, I like that. Um, yeah, I'll just have to spend more time to see where those numbers came from and then add the reference. And I can take that action item. So you're going to um, I'm going to back up the description with references. Okay, got it. Yeah, hold on, let me just capture that. Other than that, yeah, I added a few little things based on the notes I've been entering in there, but Daniel added another note here. Yeah. Uh, so I, I, I've been reading about the difference between sponsors and mentors. Uh, I think I more or less understand the difference. Um, but in the same way that we have mentors in a community and uh, for instance, in a Google Shadow of Code and so on, uh, there are people in charge of uh, helping other people to be promoted and understand and participate in the community. And uh, because of this, they are, for instance, reviewing uh, those people code. I guess the sponsors may have a similar role when we are talking about um, specifically uh, contributions, right? If so, then perhaps we can have some specific uh, metrics from a more quantitative point of view, like going to the user data sources in the project. But I don't know if this makes sense to you. So I'm not an expert on this. Um, my understanding is that sponsors are less involved in the technical aspects of contributing. They're more involved in providing opportunities and saying, hey, we have this chaos con coming up. Uh, my protege could take on some roles in helping along and to open up opportunities in the community. I don't know if, the, to me that is less technical. Mm -hmm. Then we can remove probably my comment there. But yeah, I wanted to, to be sure about the, what this meant. Well, maybe someone else has a different perspective. Maybe there is a technical aspect to it that I'm just not seeing. I guess um, 
I didn't necessarily differentiate between it had to, uh, the nature of the help or the, you know, the coaching or the guidance would be technical or non-technical, but that it, it would, in my mind, it would be less formalized and that they said, you know, sponsored in the protege didn't necessarily formally go through like a Google summer of code or a community bridge or any type of, you know, university internship program, but that it was happening a little bit more organically, but maybe, but maybe there is a differentiation between the, the technical and the non-technical too. So I posted in the chat a uh, worksheet from Stanford mm -hmm. um, from their Center for Talent Innovation. And they are four thinkers on sponsorship. Mm -hmm. And they have a nice overview of what mentors is, what sponsors do. Mm -hmm. And do they call out the technical versus the non-technical, York? I'm looking at that right now. Okay. Yeah. Oh, just uh, to bring some context here, I remember discussing with uh, Nicola using the, uh, the specific wording for technical and non-technical. And I think we finally decided to go for code-related changes and non-code-related changes? Might be the code? Yes. So, yeah. Yes. We decided to stay away from, when we were writing the mm -hmm. uh, diversity reports for OpenStack, we um, decided to stay away from uh, the technical versus non-technical language. Um, because just because you may not be contributing code or writing lines of code doesn't necessarily mean that you're not technical. Um, so, yeah, and there's been some discussion in the community, too, around that. So we decided to be a little more specific in mm -hmm. calling it code contributions versus non-code contributions. Right. That makes sense. Yep, I like that. I'm having trouble pulling up this document, but should we try to identify this a little bit more crisply and maybe add that into the description so that it is clear what the differentiation is between sponsorship and mentorship? Yeah, I tried to do that in the description at the top, but there is no technical, non-technical, code, non-code component to it. Um, the, the mentor can be anyone even from outside the community who shares skills, informal, unwritten rules, and makes suggestions um, for the mentee, whereas the sponsor gives the Prodigy access to their own network and basically pulls them in. Maybe we can think of it as a push and pull, whereas the mentor pushes the mentee to do more, be more active, to do the right things. The sponsor pulls them in and champions their visibility amongst other seniors. Does that make more sense? Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's, let's see. I also wonder if there's something in the. I'm I'm trying to pull up the um the Stanford paper as well. I I wonder if there's something in the giving them opportunities. Because I almost think of the, in a mentorship relationship, that the, the person is mentoring you in a, in a current role or position. Um, or maybe you're considering another role or position, but the, 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 the mentor hasn't necessarily um, Given you the 
pathway or opportunity, whereas maybe the sponsor actually has. Yeah. I think this is kind of really subtle and might be confusing to outside audiences without, I mean, I'm still, conf I think I'm getting more confused. <laughs> I don't know. Um, or maybe it's just me. No, it's not just you. When I first heard of sponsorship, I didn't quite see the difference to mentorship and the differences are not that clear. So. Uh, yeah, I, d I don't know how to resolve, resolve it. So maybe <laughs> hmm? What were the origins of this as a separate metric initially? I was uh, talking with you, Kendi, from Forefront. Uh, she had a presentation at the Open Source Summit in, L um, in Vancouver, I think. Mm -hmm. And she, she explained to me that sponsorship is different from mentorship and made it very clear that this needs to be a separate metric. But I, I, apparently I'm not as good at explaining it than she was. <laughs> well, I'm wondering, could we go back to her and sort of, and, or look at her sources and how she's if she's given public talks or written about it and try to understand it better. That's a good idea, yeah. And, and maybe it's something that we all take as an, if she's written or spoken about it and we can find the talks, maybe a few of us, you know, anyone actually on the working group could try to take the time to familiarize themselves with it a little bit and then we might be able to have a more coherent discussion around it you know what I mean and decide do we think this is I mean I think there is something there too like I, I can but I don't I'm not being able to articulate obviously and I'm not sure if we've totally captured it here but I know you've I think you've come close Georg you know what I mean yeah I know I, I get it it's just not crisp enough yeah so Let's put in the meeting minutes that we should review this again next week. Okay, and would you be able to send out some reading or background for us to, or sh if you just share her name, we could, like, you know, we could probably all Google and find some of her work. Um, Yul Kendi um, is her name. Okay. Okay, so I, is this good the way I, I captured it in the notes? I just said we'll all research this further and including the work of Yulkandi and we'll review again next week? Yep, mm -hmm. okay. that's good. Should we put this out as an email too to try to encourage others in the, who weren't on the call today to... To chime in? Yeah. I can send out an email. Okay. You know, that's a good idea. See if anybody else, yeah. John, um, I do have a very last topic I would like to discuss for today's yeah. meeting. Yeah, I think we're done with sponsorships, so go ahead. Yeah, so, um, so you know I'm involved at the Inner Source Commons. Um, this is about breaking silos and building internal communities and bringing open source methodologies into well internally at companies. Uh, then it happens that during the last comment, uh, there is a lot of discussion around cultural change and communities and marketplaces and, and tooling and processes and so on. But there's little discussion about specifically diversity and inclusion DNA. 
So it's it's a topic I would like to bring to the to the inner source commons. But as a first try, we are having this small meetup uh, inner source Spain, which is taking place collocated with in with uh, KubeCon, well collocated during the same days uh, in KubeCon. So uh, I know that Nicole she mentioned that she she will join. Uh, Sarah, it would be great if you're around. Um, yeah, if you think this is interesting, uh, I would love to hear from you to be part of the perhaps a small presentation around how to build internal communities and then we would have perhaps a point of view from Intel in this case, like, well, we have this and this is our approach and so on. Um, and then uh, your broader perspective, Sarah, in terms of, well, the Linux Foundation, so we are working in these areas, which is, of course, it's not a company or internally at a company, but you are bringing the open source experience. Sure. It's just yeah. some ideas. Does, does it make sense to you? Yeah, it, initially it does. I'd, I'd love to, if you have a link or something with just um, yeah. info on when the, the meetup will happen, that'd be great. Yeah, so let, let me copy this here. Uh, that's the URL. Um, yeah, so far we, we have, uh, I was looking for a couple of use cases, but I think it's a good opportunity for DNI and the work we are doing to say, hey, we are doing this and we think this is really important for building communities. Uh, either they are in open source or internally at organizations. And I would say that your, our expertise, specifically your expertise, Sarah and Nicole, might be useful. So I don't know, think about this. Absolutely, no, thank you. So this is on Tuesday uh, afternoon, well, after 3 p.m. So, well, it's after the keynotes and, and some sessions during KubeCon, so I don't think this is uh, yeah, too much overlap. Right, no, thank you, yeah. But yeah, I'll take a look at that, and I'd love to share some thoughts if, if that makes sense and there's time. Yeah, let's, let's talk by email, so don't worry. So that was all for my side. Okay. Awesome, yeah, thank you. So who would like to facilitate next week? So I will be, um, I'm not able to, I will be at the OpenStack, sorry, the Open Infrastructure <laughs> Summit next week. Okay, well, great. I can, I can help or I can take notes. Happy to do both. Yeah, and I can, I can facilitate. So then I can take notes. So, um, okay. okay. Let's do this. <laughs> awesome. <clears throat> well, uh, thank you very much, everyone, for today's very productive um, meeting. Sarah, yeah, since you took notes, you. are you going to send out the meeting minutes? I can, yes. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. Okay. And then have a good week, everyone, and see you next week. Perfect. Yes, thanks, thanks everyone. Take care. Okay. Bye -bye. All right. Bye-bye.